respected seniors and dear friends good evening to all of you uh, this was the topic i was allotted during the uh, ora 2019 at coimbatore uh, we will talk about practical tips for successful pns guided lumbo sacral plexus block this is a bit advanced block everybody is feared of uh, this block because it is a bit deeper block uh, there are vital structure around it Uh, with lumbar plexus block there are chances of uh, epidural spread and uh, sometimes subarachnoid space and there are reports of certain complications and that is why it is not very commonly used uh, and it is considered as uh, advanced level block but if you learn certain tips and tricks then it is a very easy block uh, it can be given without any complication in any patients so we will uh, talk about only uh, tips and tricks only not exact techniques uh, so if i first talk about lumbar plexus block tip 1 is choice of approach there are many approaches for uh, lumbar plexus in literatures uh, various approaches like winnie's approach chain's approach uh, capdevella's approach so we'll see w- what are these approaches so this is first Vinny's approach. Here they draw a midline passing through the spinous processes of the uh, lumbar vertebra. They uh, draw a line through the highest point of iliacus, that is toughest lines. Um, they uh, draw a line through the posterior superior iliac spine parallel to the midline, and meeting point is the entry point for the lumbar plexus. They hit the transverse process. walk up the transverse process either cranially or quadrally and look for the uh, patellar patellar response another approach is chain approach here they palpate l4 then they go 3 cm caudal and 5 cm lateral so at that at this point uh, it is said that uh, the, uh, if, if you will hit uh, the transverse process of l5 vertebra you go cranially and you will go between l4 and l5 and here you will find the uh, response of the uh, lumbar plexus that is patellar trans another ap- approach is decrease approach this is bit proximal approach this is bit higher approach uh, so here they palpate l3 go 4 to 5 cm lateral to it and insert the needle hit the transverse process of l3 and uh, walk up the transverse process and uh, look for the response this is bit proximal uh, you get the response sometimes if you get uh, you don't get sometimes there are chances of uh, damage to the um, uh, vital organ like kidney because you will find kidney sometimes here so this is not very popular approach most popular approach is capdevella's approach and winnie's approach so in capdevella's approach you have to draw midline you have to draw a line through the posterior superior spine and draw that up here line uh, and at this junction you have to divide into medial 2/3 and lateral 1/3 and that is your entry point it is bit medial to the vinnie's approach but success rate is higher with capdevella's approach only problem is if you go medially then there are chances of epidural spread so you have to be careful about that so this is a study in anesthesiology the journal of american society of anesthesiologists they check for the precision of the traditional approaches for lumbar plexus block and impact and management of inter individual anatomical variability and they found that with capdevella's approach they were closest to the Uh, lumbar plexus um, uh, and uh, when you use capdevella's approach success rate is higher so to draw the landmark as i said you have to draw the midline passing through the spinous processes of lumbar vertebra then you draw the highest point uh, the iliac crest and you have to mark the highest point of iliac crest you have to palpate the posterior superior iliac spine then draw a line Uh, at the, uh, at uh, uh, passing through the posterior superior iliac spine and uh, draw a line uh, through the highest point of the iliac crest that is toughest line so uh, at this point you have to divide this part into the medial 2/3 and lateral 1/3 and that this is your entry point for your lumbar plexus 
Step 2 is identification of landmark. It's, it becomes sometimes difficult to palpate landmark, especially in the obese patient. It is difficult to palpate posterior superior iliac spine. What I do is I palpate, start palpating from anterior superior iliac spine, uh, palpate the iliac crest, go posteriorly and look for the posterior superior iliac spine. That is how you can palpate the posterior superior iliac spine. And another point problem is high uh, pelvis, especially in obese patients. Sometimes you will find highest point of the iliac crest uh, at the level of L23, uh, especially in obese patients. So here is the study uh, where they show that in, uh, the intercrystalline determined by palpation is not a reliable anatomical landmark for neuroaxial anesthesia. And when they do it uh, manually, they found that most of the time they were at L23 level. Uh, rather than uh, desired level that is L4-5 or L3-4 uh, level. So with palpation uh, there are all chances you will go wrong. So you uh, here you can use ultrasound or if you don't have ultrasound you can use uh, um, IITV whenever required to see which is L4 and which is L5. So that is how you can define it. Selection of the needle again it is important because it is a uh, bit deeper block. You will find the plexus at 8 to 9 centimeter routinely. Uh, but if patient is obese you require 150 millimeter of needle. So select the needle properly otherwise you will not find the uh, lumbar plexus with smaller size of needle. Distance from the transverse process. This is the most important tip uh, of the lumbar plexus block. Uh, here you can see this is uh, lumbar vertebra, this is your plexus. When you insert the needle in the uh, thin and lean patient, you will find uh, uh, transverse process uh, somewhere at 4, 5 or 6 centimeter. If it is a um, uh, well-built patient, you will find sometime at 6 and 7 centimeter. If it is uh, uh, a patient is obese, then you will find at 8, 9, 10, 11 centimeter. But if you look at this distance from transverse process to the uh, plexus, it is consistent. It is 1.8 to 2 centimeter. So after hitting the transverse process, don't go beyond 2 centimeter. If you go beyond 2 centimeter, then there are all chances uh, you will injure the vital organ. So first look at the transverse process and never go beyond 2 cm when you hit the transverse process. So this is very important. If you remember it, you can reduce the chances of complication. And another important tip for this, uh, which is uh, described by Dr. Shiv Kumar Singh uh, on the anesthetist group, that is, uh, don't attach the syringe to the needle while locating the plexus. Why this is important? If you keep the needle open to the air, if you accidentally puncture dura, you will find CSF. If you accidentally puncture any vessel, then you will find blood uh, flowing through the needle. But if you attach the need, uh, uh, syringe to the needle, then you will miss this uh, important uh, um, uh, uh, CSF or uh, blood flow, uh, which will you uh, which you sh see in the uh, needle tip. So if you see this, you have to abandon the post, uh, procedure, and, or else you have to remark the uh, landmark and go ahead uh, with uh, uh, another entry point. So this is very important, never attach a syringe to the needle while locating the plexus, otherwise there are increased chances of complication. Volume of the drug, this is important, you will find in certain literature they have given 30, 35, 40 ml of LA and when you inject this much of amount and if it, is, it spreads in the epidural space then there are all chances of complication. So never go beyond 20 ml of um, ropivacan or bupivacan if you are using for analgesia 0.2% or 0.25% is adequate if you are using for anesthesia purpose uh, then use 0.5% of ropivacan or bupivacan Desired response as I earlier said dancing patella is the desired response 
contraction of the quadriceps muscle uh, which is the response we, you should look for if you get that uh, response at uh, po uh, 0.5 mm then inject the drug but you should go at up to 0.3 mm if you are getting the response at uh, 0.3 mm also then you have to withdraw the needle or readjust the needle because there are chances that your needle is intraneural and you will damage the nerves so the desired response at 0.5 mm is important uh, when you should inject the drug so these are the tips for lumbar plexus now we will mo move to the sec second part that is sacral plexus or um, uh, uh, parasacral sciatic uh, block so uh, uh, for sacral plexus again choice of approach mansur described it uh, uh, first uh, what he did is palpate the PSIS, pal palpate the uh, ischial tuberosity, draw a line, go 6 cm coder to PSIS and insert the needle. But here problem is if patient is uh, of good height like 6 feet height then there are chances that you your in, uh, needle insertion point is a bit cranial. If patient is of short stretcher like 4 feet height then you will go distally. So rather than uh, going for this approach there is a modified approach where they what what what, what we should do palpate the posterior superior spine palpate the ischial tuberosity draw a line through it divide into three and uh, your in needle insertion point is uh, uh, junction of cranial one third and uh, caudal two third so this is the point where you should insert the needle and uh, i believe that is the right technique again identification of landmark is difficult in obese patient you can use uh, um, c arm to look at the posterior superior spine and ischial tuberosity if you are not able to palpate the landmark uh, selection of needle again uh, this is a deeper block so for uh, routine patient you can use 100 millimeter needle but if patient is super obese or uh, very obese then you can go for 150 millimeter of needle volume of drug again 20 ml of the uh, ropivacaine or bupivacaine is enough you can use either 0.2 percent or 0.5 percent um, according to your need, uh, um, what you want, suppose it is for analgesia, you use 0.2%. Suppose it is for uh, anesthesia, then uh, go for 0.5% of the ropivacaine or bupivacaine. Desired response, this is very important. You have to look for the sciatic nerve response. When you insert the needle, initially you will find gluteal muscle contraction, but uh, this is not desired response. You have to go a bit deeper and look for the uh, uh, either plantar flexion or dorsiflexion of the foot, and that is the desired response. Uh, the correct motor response are extension or flexion of the foot and toes. Proximal response is not desirable. Obturator nerve stimulation is sometimes seen, that is, adduction of the thigh, that is not desirable. Contraction of the gluteal muscle indicates two superficial needle placement. You need to go deeper. In case of bone contact, either sacral or iliac bone, you have to redirect the needle uh, according to the which bone you have hit. For sacral plexus and lumbar plexus, this is common. If patient is on antiplatelet drug or anticoagulant, uh, then be careful about this block. This is deeper block and uh, ASRA and uh, other guidelines say that it is better to avoid this block because there are vascular structure and chances of hematoma. There are reports of uh, hematoma with lumbar plexus block and sometimes it can uh, cause uh, damage to the nose and surrounding structures. So it is better to avoid in a, a patient with antiplatelet and anticoagulant drug. Another important point, uh, whether we should use ultrasound guided technique or dual guidance technique. Nowadays we have ultrasound, we can use uh, linear, uh, sorry, curvilinear probe for uh, this block because it is a deeper block. But uh, um, uh, the, as it is a deeper block, it is always ad advisable to use uh, dual guidance uh, like combined uh, PNS along with uh, ultrasound so that you are sure that uh, you have hit the target and then only inject the drug uh, to uh, get uh, good success rate and to avoid uh, complication. So this is common tips for b both lumbar plexus and sacral plexus. 
so these are the tips for lumbar plexus and sacral plexus if you want to see the videos of lumbar plexus and sacral plexus they are available on my youtube channel you can type hethel vatera and you will find pns guided blocks lumbar um, landmark guided blocks and ultrasound guided blocks and some presentations also so you can watch it in on my youtube channel thank you thank you very much